And the first guest I'm going to talk to today is the head of the Department of Psychiatry at the UMC Utrecht. She's building a system where she can combine patient data so she can predict how a patient is going to develop and maybe prevent it from happening. Please welcome to the stage Professor Floortje Schepers. <laughs> Hi, good to see you. Have a, have a seat, please. Thank you. Um, Floortje. Yes. Miss Schepers. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, a psychiatrist. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, how aware. are you today? Yeah, yeah, I know. You can see right through me, yeah. huh? Yeah, right. So, before we start, before we start, well, because we talked about it a little bit, and you said, I want to show a video. And it's, it's, well, let's just look at the video. Okay. So what does this have to do with where you're working on? Um, well, I think in two ways it expresses how we try to manage and we try to deal with data in, in health, in psychiatry. Mm -hmm. um, one perspective is the perspective of the governments. Mm -hmm. um, when I started this project uh, and I well, I, I start talking with a lot of stakeholders to, uh, to get involved. They all ask me, how's the governance structure of your project? Because right, but because if, if you talk about governance, I, yeah. I think, I think uh, do these birds have governance? Well, um, they try to investigate that, and, and it seems to be that when one sparrow has a good idea and... and goes one direction. Goes one direction, <laughs> the right. others follow. And then suddenly some sparrow can think, well, the wind now is blowing better from the right side, so let's change direction. And if it's a good idea, mm -hmm. if, the, if the, the flying is more easy in that direction, the others will follow. Wow. So it's about creativity and having good ideas and, and then let the rest follow. All right. Yeah. Um. And the other aspect, of course, is, is the data themselves or, or, or itself. Um, we try to... to create some logic out of a very complex world mm -hmm. our patients live in and uh, uh, particularly psychiatric patients uh, the phenotype of a psychiatric patient is very complex and there's not one cause of a psychiatric disorder so it's uh, a constant interaction dynamic interaction between vulnerable being vulnerable and um, a stressful environment or a protective environment and this is very difficult to unravel in, mm -hmm. in classical scientific models. Yeah. So what we try to do with big data is, is look for the logic in this chaos of data that are around a patient. Right. Let's dive a little bit deeper into your project. So, okay. so what kind of patients do you work with? Um, at the UMC Utrecht, we work with um, children with de developmental disorders, right. so autism and ADHD, mm -hmm. and uh, adults with uh, psychotic disorders, so mm -hmm. uh, schizophrenia, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, right. psychotic depression, very severe patients mm -hmm. who are most of the time excluded in scientific research because they are too complex, they have comorbidity, they are suicidal, they will be addicted uh, to alcohol or drugs or right. will be homeless. So they and why are they actually excluded in all scientific research? Because, because they're too crazy. They're too crazy. They cannot right. sign informed consent. <laughs> right. okay. And if they can, um, they most of the time drop out because they're too sick or too right. ill. Right. What is your goal? What do you want to do? What I want to do is, um, this is how I try to explain to uh, scientists at our department because they always say, well, big data is not about causality, so it's very dangerous to look at correlations. And so I, uh, I use the metaphor of the red traffic light. Mm -hmm. um, if you take a red traffic light and you put it in a lab and you let, let's say, 100 pe people walk through it mm -hmm. and then you score injury, you won't score anything mm -hmm. because there's no causal effect of red traffic light and injury. There's no right. cause of relationship. No. But in real life, it really matters if you stop for a red traffic light mm -hmm. or not. So we try to look for red traffic lights in the lives of these patients. So what kind of data do you put in the system then? All kinds of data. So we try to use lab data, texts of the nurses and the psychiatrists. They write, uh, every day they write a report about the patients and how they're doing. So we try to mine these texts and look for 
patterns mm-hmm. of, of behavior, mm-hmm. um, but also questionnaires, um, diagnosis, of course, uh, and all the socioeconomic data we have of patients. Uh, and then what? So, so how many how many patients are in the database? Every year we have 2,000 new patients, mm-hmm. and we have uh, data of the past 12, 13 years. And but but we don't only look at our hub, mm-hmm. our context, right. because. Uh, contextual factors will also influence outcomes. So maybe the treatment we uh, give in, at the UMC Utrecht won't be helpful in another context. Right. So we also build a compute visits data model with three other psychiatric hubs, and we don't connect the data. Mm-hmm. Uh, we keep them in the hubs, and we uh, share the tooling, the algorithms, and the outcomes to replicate and validate the, 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 the outcomes in, right. in another context. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have more like findings already? Um, yeah, we have we have a lot, yeah. um, but these are all small findings that just help us during daily practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I think that's the huge impact of, of this way of looking at data, because um, we are not looking for a um, golden egg to explain everything. We're mm-hmm. just improving and creating a learning department that will grow every day. And in, in the more um, classic research, we look at mean scores for groups of patients. And if there is an outlier, mm-hmm. we just delete it because it influences the mean score uh, in an imbalanced way. So what we can do now is look at the outlier, focus on the outlier, and and try to figure out why is this person an outlier? Mm-hmm. What are the aspects of this person? Why can is not we learn more from an outlier? Yes, than so sometimes we can. How do you know that system is right? Especially from the, the, the medicine part, because that can be pretty dangerous. It is, and it is what I do now in my head. It's some kind of a big data statistics in my head. I try to make a decision based on what I've learned during uh, my, um, my med school, what I've read in papers, only a fraction of mm-hmm. it because right. there are a lot of papers, right. and what I learned from my colleagues and what I experienced during my career, my, mm-hmm. my, my, what, what, what I built up in my career. So it's big data what I do in my head. Mm-hmm. And if the computer can help me with that and show me what all my colleagues did in this situation, it will... Um, it's not an aspect that I can involve in my decision making. Right, but but the question for me is, how do I know there's yeah. no bias in it? There are, is there's no a bad lot of bias data in it. In it there's or? a lot of bias in it, of course. There's a lot of bias in my hat, more than I, I wish. We, we audit algorithms mm. every, every minute. Um, we use them, and every new patient's, uh, patient that will walk in my ward will... Um, develop the algorithm mm-hmm. so every outcome counts and if we base our treatment decisions on an algorithm and it doesn't work patients won't uh, react or whatever yeah then then this algorithm will dismi- diminish and mm-hmm. if if the treatment works and, mm-hmm. and patients get well in a very quick time using this algorithm it will be stronger so it's a learning um, system and yep. and also we don't send the data scientists into their room with a with a lot of data and a computer. We try to do this scrum. So we we um, look at data with nurses, with psychiatrists, with di- data scientists, and together we create right. value out of it and try to understand what we see.